Welcome to Now in Android, episode number 30. First off, mad skills. We keep on rolling through more and more content. We are still playing through some app bundle stuff, which I think I talked about last time. So there's uh, been the, the finish of that series. Um, so we had a tip from a Google developer expert followed by a live and recorded Q&A uh, with me asking some questions. And then uh, we had Ben Weiss and Wojtek Kalichinski and Yuri Makno uh, providing actual answers for those. So you can check that out um, to find out some questions and answers in the App Bundle space. After that, last week we started publishing a new series on material design components. First up, episode from Nick Butcher talking about why why we recommend using material design components and giving an overview of some of the capabilities of MDC, including theming support, built-in transitions, and the components themselves that make it much easier to take that design guidance that we provide and actually encapsulate it into components that you can just plug and play in your application. Next episode was from Nick Rout talking about how to do material theming. And he walked through the Material Theme Builder sample app to show you how to use and customize uh, themes in your application. Uh, both of these, actually all of these, are uh, also accompanied with articles on various related topics, and those are linked as usual. Uh, this week, Chris Baines posted an episode uh, on creating a dark theme with MDC, uh, and that uses both Android 10's Four Stark uh, feature as well as MDC's Day Night theme uh, that you can then use as well as customize. Uh, we have more MDC content coming this week, uh, probably around the time that you are watching this video. Uh, as well as next week, we will again have a live Q&A uh, with me asking some Qs and other people uh, hopefully supplying some As. Um, for ongoing content in MAD, just check out the playlist on YouTube as well as the articles on Medium. Uh, and there's also a landing page for all things uh, modern Android development, including MAD skills. Finally, next, not finally, uh, app bundles and target API requirements. So we have mentioned this before that app bundles uh, in late next year will become a requirement for new applications. And now we've gotten specific about timing of that, as well as specific about target API requirements as we continue to increment that uh, into the future. Um, so the specifics were covered in a article uh, by Hoy Lam, and very briefly, in August of next year, um, all of this is for new apps. So new apps will need to target API level 30. New apps will also need to use app bundles for distributing, for uploading to the Play Store. And new apps will also, if you have assets or features that are over 150 megabytes, you will need to deliver them via Play Asset Delivery and or Play Feature Delivery. Uh, note that extension files, OBBs, uh, will will no longer be supported for new applications. And then in November of next year, November of 2021, app updates will also need to target API level 30. Documentation. There were a couple of important documentation updates on d.android.com. First of all, fragments. Uh, the team did a substantial rewrite of all of that documentation uh, to help you understand both how things work as well as best practices um, for using fragments. Uh, this includes things like up-to-date guidance, uh, life cycles, states, um, testing with fragments, uh, and much, much more. So check out the new guides as well as uh, the subsections of those. Also, if you want more information, a little annotated guide to what each of those changes were, Ian Lake, who's been working on actually fixing a lot of this stuff, uh, as well as helping uh, document it, uh, annotated what those changes were in his Twitter feed. So you can check that out. Also, Kotlin Flows, we provided a, an entirely new guide, um, new documentation there to help you understand uh, how to use the basics of the Kotlin Flow feature. And this includes everything from testing to using the new state flow as well as shared flow APIs. Articles, speaking of articles and videos, uh, we have tons and tons of those available. Um, starting with, so I wrote a guide on testing startup performance. So uh, for something I've been working on recently, which I will be posting additional articles for in the next couple of weeks, uh, I really wanted to get good automated measurement of startup time for a particular application. I wanted to run it lots of times and then time those durations and do sort of A-B comparisons um, with other runs. And it wasn't obvious how to do that. So I chased down the details of one approach to doing that, including uh, running a shell script and ADB shell, as well as how to lock the clocks to make your timings more consistent. 
uh, as well as just how to derive that information from the system. Because we are tracking startup time in the system. We issue it to the log, and I go over all the details of how to get that information um, if you want to track your startup uh, performance, which is an important step toward improving your startup performance. There was a new article uh, from Manuel Vivo on migrating from Dagger to Hilt. Um, trying to answer the question of whether you should do this. If you're already using Dagger, should you spend the effort on your team to actually migrate? And there are uh, several reasons to do so, but it kind of depends on your situation. So he covers all this information in the article, uh, including uh, advantages for doing so if they apply to you, such as um, good testing of the APIs, consistency uh, in approach to dependency injection, as well as integration with various Android X extensions that we have. Uh, speaking of Hilt, we also have a getting started guide that was published by Philip Stannis. I uh, posted this article to help developers spin up on this and uh, get going on Hilt in your application. And this is uh, this article is even for developers that may not have any prior experience in dependency injection or in Dagger. It's just about Hilt and dependency injection overall. I should point out that the the title of the article could be a little misleading. It's called uh, getting started in Hilt with Kotlin or something. That's really a reference to the fact that the code snippets in the article are in Kotlin. So it's certainly easy to understand as a Kotlin developer what's going on, but actually all of the techniques and technologies uh, talked about in the article are also applicable to people using the Java programming language. So don't be uh, misled by the title. Uh, if you're a Kotlin developer, great. If you're not a Kotlin developer, also great. Check out the article. Going with the flow, uh, Manuel Vivo published uh, a new video. Um, so I talked about the earlier documentation on flow, but we also have a video to help you understand how to get started with flow. Um, we use Kotlin flow for uh, emitting streams of data um, uh, related to coroutines, but coroutines basically can return a value. Uh, you use flow for actually returning a, a series of values. Um, that you can then act on. It builds on a previous video that I think I talked about in now in Android in, in a previous episode called the ABCs of coroutines. Um, so you might want to check that out first and then get in the flow. Kotlin extensions, uh, there's a new uh, article uh, published by David Weiner that talks specifically about view binding versus Kotlin synthetics. So Kotlin synthetics was introduced as a mechanism to make it easier to avoid all the boilerplate and tediousness of calling find view by ID to find that view in your hierarchy. View binding is the new approach to doing that, and synthetics uh, will be deprecated in a later version of the Kotlin Android plugin. Um, so this is sort of a heads up that, that is going to happen, you should really be using uh, view binding instead for various reasons that are covered in the article. Also, the article discusses the use of the parcelize extension, um, which is still perfectly supported and uh, will continue to be recommended and supported going forward. Finally, background location. We've been making a lot of behavior changes in the platform over the last several releases, specifically around user data and making it easier to understand for users uh, who has access to their uh, data and whether they should have access to that data, sort of increasing the transparency as well as their level of control over how the data is used. One of the major areas ongoing in the last several releases um, that we're buttoning down is in location. The user may want to know why your application needs access to that location, and they may not agree that you need access to their location. They really want to keep that data private. Uh, so there is a new Google Play policy uh, that will soon require that apps that need location location while they are in the background actually need to get uh, permission for doing that. They need to request permission from the Play Store for doing that. And this article covers all the details, makes it more transparent, how to get that, what the process is. Um, so go check that out for that information and check out the Medium article version of Now in Android 30 for all the links of everything that I talked about. And if you like the video, go ahead and like and share and subscribe to the Android Developers Channel on YouTube. Thanks. Thank you.